First Missouri Bank, 455 Sandbar Drive in Kearney. The phone number is 816-903-9010. First Missouri Bank, we're passionate about helping people create a brighter financial future in the communities we call home. Member FDIC. Good evening and welcome to the KPGZ Newsroom for your weekly news recap. I'm Jim Dickerson. Tonight we return to Clay County where, once again, Clay County commissioners seem to believe they are above the law as they threaten legal action against Kansas City for issuing a cease and desist order on a $20 million annex project. The new annex has been a pet project for County Commissioners Gene Owen and Luann Ridgway for over a year and has caused an outcry from citizens because the county already runs a viable annex building. Additionally, the commissioners have authorized large bonds without the consent of voters. The Kansas City Planning and Zoning Department slapped the county with a stop work order last week as crews started clearing land at Missouri Highway 152 and North Brighton Avenue. Planning and zoning inspectors claim they didn't authorize clearing or construction permits to the county or contractors hired by the county. In retaliation to the stop order, Clay County issued another unsigned press release that said the county believes Kansas City has no jurisdiction over Clay County and its projects and will have counsel file suit to remove the order. The county hired outside legal counsel who sent a letter to Kansas City threatening legal action if officials don't allow the work to continue. Through all of this, presiding commissioner Jerry Nolte has been very clear that he wants all annex work halted. He has indicated that he wants the incoming commission to decide whether and how to move forward with the construction. Voters will be selecting two new commissioners in the November election as commissioners Gene Owen and Luann Ridgway are not seeking re-election. At the Board of Aldermen meeting on September 21st, the City of Kearney approved a resolution to allocate $300,000 in CARES funds to the Kearney School District. Here's Brian Watts with the story. The allocation is in response to a September 14th request by the school district stating that the district has seen revenue reductions of nearly $2 million and has incurred coronavirus-related expenditures exceeding $600,000 during the pandemic. In a request to the city, Dr. Matthew Miller stated that the school district has foregone making other purchases that would support more effective instruction because of the revenue loss and increased expenditures. Mayor Randy Pogue brought the resolution to the board for approval to help the school district purchase computers and related equipment necessary to conduct educational programming and maintain a safe environment during the COVID-19 pandemic. My message here is we are one community and that we're all in this together. I believe it's extremely important for us to support our school district and recommend the board give strong consideration to approving the enclosed resolution and, and memorandum of understanding. The board unanimously approved the resolution to allocate the $300,000 in CARES funds to the Kearney School District. Hoping to rebound from two disappointing losses, the one and two Kearney Bulldogs returned home Friday night to face the one and one Ruskin Eagles. Mike Davis joins us now from the KPGZ Sports Center with our Stables Game Day update. And Mike, I got to be honest, this was not really the game I think many people expected to see. That's right, Jim. There is no other way to say it. This was a 70 to 20 Bulldog beatdown. Let's get to the action. Near the end of the second quarter, the score tied 14 all, a well placed Braxton Breedlove punt and a heads-up play by the Bulldog special teams pinned the Eagles on their own one-yard line. The Bulldog defense held the Ruskin offense to three and out, forcing a punt from their own end zone. Andrew Swain blocks the punt, and the ball rolled out of the back of the end zone for a safety. Bulldogs on top, 16-14. The route began before halftime as Caden Borchert scores on one of his four touchdowns on the evening with his 13-yard gallop into the end zone. The Kearney offense wasn't finished yet. With 2.44 left in the half, 
Dawson Minert finds Carson Frakes in the back of the end zone with a beautiful fade pass for a 12-yard Carney Bulldog touchdown. The pass from Minert to Frakes was the Carney Chamber of Commerce play of the game. The Kearney defense was able to hold Ruskin to 241 yards of total offense, placing so much pressure on Eagles quarterback George Pledger, he was only able to complete three of 15 pass attempts for 29 yards. Thanks, Mike. That was a really fun game to watch. Kearney will travel to Green Valley tomorrow night. Let's take a look at our weekend weather. There's lots of sunshine on tap for us this weekend. Friday through Sunday, we can expect mostly sunny skies with temperatures in the 80s during the day. Overnight, skies will remain mostly clear. Temperatures will fall into the upper 50s or the lower 60s. Be sure to join us here in the KPGZ Newsroom every Thursday at 6.30 for your weekly news recap, hourly on 102.7 FM, and for breaking news as it happens on our website at 1027carnimo.com. For those of you joining us here on KPGZ-TV, stay tuned for a special report as Kearney School District Superintendent Matthew Miller gives a school board update. The update will be immediately followed by the Coach Gray Show. On behalf of all of us here at KPGZ, have a great weekend.